Hi, my name is Chuck Powers. I work for the National Renewable Energy Lab. Welcome to the Research Support Facility, or RSF for short, located here in Golden, Colorado. The RSF is a 360,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility, one of the most energy efficient buildings in the world, and home to about 1,350 researchers and support staff that are focused on developing the latest in renewable energy technologies. Data centers are very energy intensive. The RSF data center was designed to use 80% less power than our old data center that's been in use for the last 30 years. The RSF data center is something very special. Come on, let's have a look. The RSF is really a groundbreaking office building. Not only is the RSF LEED Platinum certified, it is also net zero energy, meaning all the energy for the building is generated on site using renewable energy sources. In this case, we're using solar to produce energy for the building. The RSF was designed to be a world-class showcase for enteral innovation and best practices. Really, the RSF is a model for future buildings. Because most buildings of the size contain data centers, we made a conscious decision to build a data center in this building. What we're really trying to do is demonstrate how to optimize data center power usage. It was absolutely imperative that we found ways to reduce our power requirements for the data center as much as possible without jeopardizing service quality. To say the least, we had a real challenge ahead of us during the design for the data center. Power usage effectiveness, or PUE, is used to evaluate the energy efficiency for data centers. PUE is calculated by dividing all the power required in the data center. In other words, all the power required for the cooling system, the power management system, and the equipment divided by the power required for just the equipment. Many traditional data centers require more than two watts of power to run cooling and power management systems for every watt of equipment, meaning for every watt required for servers, storage, and network gear. The cooling and power management systems used in our data center require only one-tenth of a watt for every watt required by equipment. Think about it, all those servers in rows and rows of racks. They use a lot of power and generate a lot of heat. It takes energy to cool those servers down. Most data centers use air conditioning, which uses a lot of energy. Nearly half the energy used in data centers is used for cooling, so that's a good place to start. In our data center, instead of using air conditioning, there are actually two different air treatment systems. One system sucks hot air out of the data center. In cold months, the heat is redistributed through the building's ductwork to help keep the rest of the building warm. A second system pulls in fresh air from this vent. The air circulates underground where the constant temperature is about 54 degrees. From there, the chilled air circulates through a completely separate system and cools the data center. And fans circulate the cool air back to the servers. Thanks to Climate Right for these efficiency methods, our data center rarely uses air conditioning. Keep in mind, the data center is always working, 24-7. So we use free cooling, and we've really taken extra steps to manage airflow. We laid out the data center in a hot aisle, cold aisle configuration. Here's how it works. Cool air is drawn through the server from front to back. And it gets hot as it passes through the equipment. The hot air is exhausted out the back of the server. What we did was arrange the rows of racks so that the hot sides faced each other, creating a hot aisle. Now, to better control that hot air, we created a hot aisle containment. In closing the hot aisle from the rest of the data center, using a roof on top and doors on the ends. Another way to keep the hot air from the cold air is by using one of these. They're called blanking panels. Whenever the gaps between servers and racks, these blanking panels help keep the hot air from leaking out of the hot aisles, creating a better self-contained environment. But it doesn't in there. Another thing that you might not have thought about is how your cables are laid out. Messy cabling obstructs the airflow of cooling fans, and that requires more energy to cool. It's a simple concept, but organized, neat, and tidy cables help add up to less energy use. So that covers cooling, but as you know, all data centers require power. Finding energy-efficient power was really a no-brainer. 
Most data centers require a UPS, and there's significant opportunities for energy efficiency in most of these systems. All we really had to do was replace our old 80% UPS system with a new 97% energy efficient UPS system. This instantly increased our energy efficiency by 17%. This 97% energy efficient UPS system allows us to effectively save 30 kilowatts on our 100 kilowatt load for the data center. That's almost a third. The final piece of the puzzle in our equation has to do with the equipment itself. There are two important things to consider in this part of the equation. The equipment that you select and using that equipment to its full capacity. In order to meet our energy goals for the data center, we replace our legacy servers with these blade servers that are 30% more efficient right out of the box. The blade servers use energy efficient power supplies and variable speed fans to achieve its improved energy efficiency. And today's servers are much smaller and more capable. So the other way we really increase energy efficiency is how we use our servers. And for that, we use virtualization. We use virtualization to take the workload that used to run on 20 individual servers and run it on one energy efficient blade server. By doing this, we have reduced our power footprint for servers by more than 90%. At this time, 80% of our server environment is virtualized. Here's another important point. By using virtualization, we have increased our server utilization from 5% to 70%. So, we need far fewer servers, which means far less energy. Now you can see how our best practices approach to cooling, power, and equipment all work together to create a highly efficient, high-performance data center. With this approach, we reduce our power requirements by 80%. 80%! Just think about it. Instead of requiring two watts for every watt of equipment in our old data center, we now only require one-tenth of a watt without sacrificing performance. Now that our data center has proven to work and work well, a lot of attention has been paid to this accomplishment. The work that we've done here has set a new standard in data centers around the world. And many of the techniques here can be applied to new data center construction or retrofits. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Thanks for your time.